Hi, in this series I'll be going over the main steps that I use to create injection molded parts from recycled plastic using 3D printed molds. This first video will hopefully serve as a good overview of the process and then in future videos I'll go into more detail on each of the steps. There's a community of DIY plastic recyclers using simple DIY injection molding equipment that you can either make or buy. This is a great way to both raise awareness of plastic waste, but also to actually make use of plastic that would otherwise end up in landfill. The moulds for DIY injection moulding machines are usually made of aluminium, as it is relatively cheap to machine compared to professional tool making materials, and it can be made into accurate durable moulds. Aluminium is a great option if you plan to sell lots of parts, but if you're experimenting and iterating like me, aluminium moulds aren't ideal. I don't own metal CNC equipment, and so if I want an aluminium mould, I have to pay hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars to get it machined. This also means I want to get the design right first time, so I don't have to fork out more money for a revised version in the future. This just makes it hard to iterate and experiment freely, which is primarily what I want to do. As I have an FDM, or filament 3D printer, I set about trying to see what I could achieve with DIY injection moulding into FDM 3D printed moulds. And so here we are. Before I go on, I wanted to say that this video series aims to explain the process I use. I'm not saying it's the best or the only way, it's just what I've found to work with the tools I have. If you have other techniques that have worked for you, I'd love to learn about them also, please share. I also wanted to note that I've had a few questions asking why I don't use resin 3D printing for the moulds. 3D printed resin moulds produce great quality parts, but for me, not only do I not have a resin 3D printer, I much prefer using what I think is a more sustainable material for the moulds, PHA filament which can be composted at the end of its life. Okay, with all of that out of the way, let's run through the steps I use to create DIY injection molded parts. The first step is to decide what you actually want to mold and create the part in 3D CAD software. I guess you could skip this step if you're making something that already exists as a 3D model, but there are a lot of considerations that go into designing a part for molding, so not all 3D models will immediately be suitable. For CAD software, I use SOLIDWORKS but any program that can output an STL or 3MF file for slicing and 3D printing will probably work. Part design is a large topic. There's far too much to get into in this video, but probably the most important considerations are part thickness variations and how the part will come out of the mold. If this is your first time, I suggest starting with something simple that will come out of a two-part mold like this. If you're more experienced, then I probably don't need to suggest anything to you, except to say that it's actually quite achievable to make complicated three or more multi-part moulds for DIY injection moulding. As you are assembling and disassembling the mould yourself, you can basically have whatever part lines you're comfortable creating. Once you have the part you want to create, you need to create a mould, again in 3D CAD software. The mould is usually two or more parts with a central cavity. The cavity is the negative of the part you want to create, so you can inject plastic into it, and mold the part. Some of the features and considerations for mold design are alignment details to ensure the parts of the mold align correctly, fitment tolerancing, allowing small clearances between mold parts so that the molds close fully but snugly, venting both to let air escape as plastic is injected but also for DIY molding it lets excess plastic escape and can be used as a visual indicator of when the mold is full, and fastening it's important that the mould can be held tightly shut while plastic is injected into it under pressure. Once you have a mould in CAD, you can export it as either an STL or 3MF file for 3D printing. In general, you need to use a 3D printing filament that has a reasonably high heat deflection temperature for the mould, because you'll be injecting it with molten plastic. I use PHA filament. I really want to dedicate an entire video to this in the future because even though there are a million videos that already exist on 3D printing, I think PHA filament is underrepresented and a great choice of filament for many applications. I use it widely, as for me, its compostability greatly reduces the guilt of waste from 3D printing. It is, in my experience, unlike printing any other filament and has some quirks. Managing warping is probably the biggest challenge that can be addressed in a number of ways, both print settings and part design. I'll save this for another video so those who are interested can tune in. To prepare the mould files for printing, you use slicing software. This basically slices the file into layers and commands that the 3D printer can interpret. You can adjust slicer settings to optimise the 3D printed mould for strength, dimensional accuracy and finish. These settings include the part strength, the number of outer walls and infill percentage, keeping in mind that the thicker and more solid you print, the more material you use. I generally like to use as little material as possible to achieve the desired strength. 
For accuracy, you can adjust the print speed and layer height. I usually stick to 0.2 or 0.16 millimeter layers with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but finer layers produce less visible layer lines. Once the mold is printed, you're almost ready to test it. But first, you need some plastic to inject. The type of plastic you use is really up to you based on what you have available. I mainly use LDPE and HDPE bottle caps as they are harder to recycle in traditional recycling programs and easily obtainable where I live. The plastics that generally work well are LDPE, HDPE and PP. If the producers of the original plastic parts have done their bit, then these plastics should have clear numbered labels identifying their plastic type, 4 for LDPE, 2 for HDPE and 5 for PP. I generally collect any used plastic bottle caps and lids and then sort them into plastic type and then again into colour. Once sorted, you run each group separately through a shredder to break them down into small pieces so they are ready for use. You can shred by hand with scissors or a knife, but it's a pretty tedious job that way. To mould the parts, you're going to need a DIY extruder or injection machine. There are many types available and also plans to build one yourself online. I technically have an extruder. It has a hopper to add material and a hand crank to push the material into the mould as it's heated. Firstly, you preheat the machine to a suitable temperature for the chosen plastic being recycled. For LDPE on my machine, I set the temperature to about 150 degrees Celsius or roughly 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, I recommend spraying some mould release on the parts of the mould that will be exposed to the molten plastic to help with release. Then you fasten the mould together. I use an external plywood housing these days to keep it all rigid. After that, you simply add some plastic, attach the mould, inject, remove, and open. Then you can cut off any excess plastic and you have your moulded part ready for action. And that's my overview of DIY injection moulding using 3D printed moulds. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope you found this informative. I did find it challenging to decide how detailed and technical to get in this video as there's a lot to cover. So please feel free to provide constructive feedback. As I mentioned, I plan to make some more videos that go into further detail about the various stages of this process. I'm not actually sure how many people are interested in further detail, so please let me know in the comments if you are someone who would like to know more as it will probably motivate me to get the videos done sooner. Thanks and catch you next time.